Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel, guys. In this video today, we have been out there. FC Barcelona has been active in the transfer market. There's been outgoings, there's been incomings. There's been a lot of different strategies at play because, as we know, when you look at the market on Soraya at the moment, there is opportunities galore. Now, it depends on what an opportunity looks like, you know, what divisions you play in, what scarcity of card we're talking about, etc. But for long-standing viewers of the channel, you'll know over the last, like, year to 18 months, I've had to disarm, I've had to sell lots, lots of different strands, lots of different arms of my gallery to fund high purchase Celtic cards, as well as other market moves, and as well as like the studio and content and all that fun stuff. If we go all the way back to game week 347, my Celtic Superverse stack with the holy goalie Skorupski uh, came in third in one of the first game weeks I had Skorupski for, and we want a Carlo Hulsa as a super rare along with a James Ward-Prowse rare, which we sold for a good couple of quid as well over this period um, as well. But Carlo Hulsa was the star win. He was the, it wasn't the star, but he was the star of the show. He was the super rare, the under 23 capable guy at Rosenberg that was going to be on all the set pieces and was coming back from injury and all the rest of it. And I've got to admit, guys, I missed a like, fantastic opportunity on this uh, card. Coming back to the Norwegian season starting, uh, obviously a big account has joined the platform Pranksy. It must have been one of the only days I didn't have mine listed up, but he picked one up off a of Mamba for two ETH and then later... <laughs> You know, later that day, if not within the same day, uh, within the same week at least, Mamba then goes and buys him an auction for half the price. So I could have maybe got a little direct offer from Pranksy there for two ETH, but I didn't have it listed at the time, which is unfortunate. But then I received a direct offer myself for the card that I found quite tempting, but it was nowhere near where I was willing to accept. Carlo Hosa is a huge asset. Now, he's going to be aging out of under 23 imminently, which is a huge part of his price and a huge part of his appeal. But I was also starting to think with the Ultimate Champions deal, maybe Rosenberg and maybe Norway isn't really going to happen on Surya. Uh, for the next year, so maybe that has a nice wee bit of a value add opportunity for me. But the initial offer I was getting was just not close enough. There was about half an ETH on the table, and the guy was trying to offer me a Cameron Carter Vickers rare and a Joe Hart rare. Now, as you guys will be shouting at the other side of the screen, there, Quinny, you've needed a Carter Vickers for ages. Quinny, you should have got a second Joe Hart ages ago. That sounds like an amazing deal, but. Anyway, long one short, we managed to push the boat out a little bit and through a few counter offers and negotiations, we managed to get a good chunk of ETH out and bring in a card as well on top of that. But we eventually settled on Carlo Hosa for an ETH plus Cameron Carter Vickers. Now, as I was getting through this negotiation strategy, I knew Carter Vickers was going to be staying on the negotiating table and that Soraya Italia probably thought he was going to be getting a good deal out of me because the Carter Vickers was a bit of leeway. Now, with it auctioning so recently at an ETH, and back then when those prices were moving around, Ethereum hadn't went on the little mini bull run that it had recently. So, pound note-wise, I actually was able to get... When I won the Carlo Hosa, what well, would have been the equivalent to an ETH and a half. And when I had won my Carlo Hosa back in mid-February, it auctioned at 1.2 Ethereum when Ethereum was much lower. So overall, it felt like Ethereum-wise, I was getting a market decent deal for him. And bear in mind, like, you know, there's not a lot of huge money going around in the market for big piece super rare. So I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity of having um, a motivated buyer at my door. But the last bit, I was going to push it for one more step because we did get the Carter Vickers in, as you've seen there. But the very first card I wanted to go and buy with the proceeds of this deal was someone who I've been actually seeing on content for the last week or two is criminally undervalued in the so rare market at the moment. And I thought, oh, I can maybe push one more counter offer, get it up to 1.09 Ethereum, and then I can go and get this guy and still have a clean Ethereum sitting there. Alas, I, I bottled it and just accepted the, the flat ETH and the Cameron Vickers. Cameron Carter Vickers. But the first guy I went out and bought straight away was a Matt O'Reilly. Now, O'Reilly at this point in the season is doing absolutely fantastic, but with him being under 23 and a very prominent player at Celtic, I find it so appealing to get him in for 0 0.099. And then, if you notice the clever detail, my Matt O'Reilly is actually the jersey number, the 33 out of 100. So I took that normal one and I flipped it with a couple of quid, what was that, £16? And I managed to get a normal Matt O'Reilly into a jersey mint of Matt O'Reilly. So for wholesale leaving and a big bag of money coming in, I've now got so many different options now 
As you guys will have noticed, we are now got a new sponsor on the channel. The guys over at Quinbet found the content out on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, and all these other crazy places. And, you know, they really like the content, and they think the content here on the channel is going to get bigger, and is going to improve and grow. And they believe that they can support the channel, and they can sponsor us and help us achieve that. So, they've got a link in the description of this video. By clicking on that, you obviously support all the content here at the channel. And I thank you in advance if you do so. And how good is this? The guys at Quinbet have enhanced their UK welcome offer where you can now get a free bet up to £35. It's for new customers that sign up only. You can check out the full terms conditions on their website quinbet.com or click on the link in the description. Uh, it looks really impressive to me. It's 18 plus and remember folks, always gamble responsibly. But when I've got a big bag of money there, when I've got a big Ethereum sitting there, I've got the O'Reilly, I've got the Vickers in, but I've got some real decisions to make, you know, because the price of Ethereum is, is up and down at the moment. It was settled around a thousand pounds there or so for a while, but it's up to 1500 and you know, sometimes in my experience, it's good to just cash in a bit of ETH, but there are so many opportunities in the market. And like I mentioned in the intro, I've been taking pieces off my gallery to fund all of this, you know, and it's a good time to get back in, to arm up some of those strategies that I've let deteriorate and are in need of some TLC. In total, guys, I've been up to pick up a further seven cards, okay? Now, I've not spent a great deal of money on any of them, but they're all going to vividly enhance my options that I've got right now and going into the European off-season. And there's a lot of amazing strategies that I've had actually been able to rekindle through this little kind of, you know, I, I've put it in my notes here is dip depth okay so the first thing i've done is i've needed a champion europe super rare defender right with a bit of extra utility now granted i've had well better targets if that's even a good sentence it probably isn't than this guy but this guy's been firmly on my to-do list on my must get list as soon as possible and no one's been listening for any reasonable price until this very moment and that is juan inglesius now juan is basically honestly if you watch this guy He's basically two-footed, he's really agile, he's a pretty good fullback, but he's he's very good. I'm a big, big fan of this guy. He's still under 23 eligible. And, you know, the rotation power of Jatafi, I can read it, you know, because I've obviously watched a lot of them. He plays more away than home at the moment, but I think when he's fully fit, he'll play every game. And we managed to pick him up for uh, 0 0.07 Ethereum. Now, the cheapest one on the market typically is like free Ethereum, because the other guy that's got one for sale is just at the wind up you know taking the piss the next thing i went out and done is i got another left back but i went and handcuffed my greg taylor rare now getting the vickers and getting the o'reilly in is very important of course because it just buffs up my options alongside the other cards that i've got but for the longest time i've needed that bernabe card i've needed that back up to taylor to make sure that hey i've always got a celtic defender ready also i've got cat cameron carter vickers now and we've got some other cards and whatever right but that having that back, having that left back situation handcuffed is very valuable for peace of mind. Bernie was a great player, great to get a first season issue of him, and yeah, I'm really excited to buy it. Good time to buy him as well because he's just got DNPs and sub appearances. It's a nightmare trying to get Bernabe after he's played well. Now you guys know me, I've supported the New York City FC since they were founded, which is for me, I quite like that. I quite like being. I've, I've supported that club all their days, right? Now when I'm on the internet, I've got a lot of people on my feed that maybe you do, maybe you don't, right? But you know, New York City stuff, whatever. And whenever a player comes on in my feed repeatedly that's impressing in the, the youth team or the second team or whatever, the first thing I do is I jump onto so rare and I favourite him and I just wait for them to get a card. And we had one of them drop up in his name. It's a great first name he's got here. Jonathan Jimenez. Now, this guy, I don't remember the exact credentials for why I favourited him, but they were impressive. And I think I actually expected to see this guy feature last season. Notice he doesn't have a rookie card. He was in the squad last year, I think, on a few occasions. Maybe didn't actually debut. Maybe did. I forget, you know. But we picked him up for next to nothing. He's DNP and lit mad at the moment. But an under-23 forward in NYCFC is always a good card for me to pick up. And I was really happy to add, you know, just another one. Now, with the Greg Taylor thing in mind, and I've got Bernabe, and I've got O'Reilly, and I've got Carter Vickers in now, I'm now starting to look into the European offseason, and I'm looking about when all my cards are going to go off. Now, if you actually go through the lineup builder, see between now and where the lineup builder ends, it's a great period to go and have a quick scoot around and just double check exactly goalkeeper forward options you've got, bits and bobs, because there's some very interesting midweeks coming up. But as I start to forecast into the summer, I do want and need a wee bit more NYCFC defensive coverage. I've got Tavon Gray's not really played too much. Chino is quite old, of course, and I've got that Kufri super rare. So I went out and I got myself a Tiago Martins finally. Now you may be looking at this and going, Quinny, 
the, why did you get this one? And it's not even you, it's on it anymore. It's an old season one, etc, etc. Well, you might have guessed already, but I managed to trade in for the jersey number Tiago Martins from last season. I had to give the guy like 20 quid or something again to trade it in, but we got the job done. So my NYCFC MLS Cup Champions 2021 squad jersey number collection now has a number five defender in there. We've got a great collection on the go here. We're, we're, we're not too far away. We've maybe got four cards left to get or something like that. Not many at all, but we're chomping them down one at a time. And Thiago Martins is ever present. So having him, Chino, as well as the other guys I've mentioned, that just gives me an extra little level of comfort. Now... One of the reasons I don't like stacking is because you become over-reliant on that team's fixtures and that team's actual form and ability. And if you look at the game weeks that I've just came out of, you know, if you're so heavily invested in one team doing well, your game week can quickly blow up on your face. So I like to have, you know, I, I like to um, mitigate my exposure, as it were. So looking at the non-EU period, I'm very NYCFC dominant, of course, but I've recently won Ladero, which is great. I've still got Johnny Rustin, I've still got Gold. I've recently got Sviatchenko, rare and super rare. So I've got some great options all the way across, but I've noticed a few details and I'm not quite finished with this one. So the details on this strategy, you'll have to come back for another video to get the full tail of the full tail of the tape, as it were, right? But I went and added in two more cards to cover my non-EU period, okay? The first one is a, a very easy example of a great strategy to deploy, okay? And that is Everaldo. Now, Everaldo has moved from K Kashiba Antlers here to Bahia, who is the CFG uh, Brazilian team, basically. And he's playing centre forward. He's only had one game, scored a goal. I've spoke to a, a man in the know in Brazil, picked him up for... 90 quid, I think this is a bargain. And he looks to be the main target man. If you don't know, Bahia also have Kaki, you know, one of those Wonder Kid guys Man City picked up. He's there on loan. And Nicolas Acevedo, who I've got a rare and a super rare of, is in that squad also. So having another forward that will be playing most weeks in a CFG team, which is cool as well. So I've got a wee CFG folder for the alumni uh, that I have across the globe. Then that's cool, that works. But Bahia are not licensed, and I've got an in-season Everaldo. So, if I can race this guy past level 10 quick enough, then coming into this European off-season, and even when the Europeans come back, Everaldo will be buff and ripped, and he should be running on 12 and 13%, hopefully, uh, banging in goals and, and doing great for Bahia. So, really excited about that, and I thought at that price it was too good to turn down. Now, there's a very similar dynamic here going into the last card that I've picked up for the the last part of this video, and that is Richie Ledesma. Now, when I heard Harry Trades mention him on Looking Up the Laird, I was like, crap, Cat is going to be out the bag. I better get one as quick as I can. And the price hadn't moved on him too much, I don't think. It had went up a bit um, seven days ago. Yeah, since we, since he's 84, he's been up, right? But this 47 is a bit misleading because he had a very good assist. Uh, the goal itself was chopped off. So I think Ledesma, like... I'm really excited by Ledesma, but I would much rather have a Gabby Pereja just because he's obviously in an NYCFC shirt. I've been waiting fucking two seasons to get one at this point, but he's only got a couple of cards and his price is mega at the moment, as you can see. And to be quite frank, for the scores he's got, they're amazing, right? But Ledesma, if you look at these two, st these are the first two starts he's had. The AA has been incredible in both of the games and he's been unlucky not to be decisive in both of them. So I think bang for buck wise, it's hard to wait for Pereja without having a Ledesma for me. I also sold James Ward-Prowse in this time as well for 0.088. So that was basically that whole podium. I picked up some money at the time, but then he's been out as well. And all of those reinforcements... So I'm totally covered basically for up front, for defence, EU, non-EU, Celtic, NYCFC, and in midfield with Ledesma and O'Reilly. Like I've got quality reinforcements all across the pitch, all across the calendar, in defence, midfield and up front with huge XP bonus potential, definite utility for them all, for under half an Ethereum and a Carter Vickers. And then we managed to pocket all the change, or maybe not quite all the change. I'm feeling really good about it, you know? And there's only one or two little pieces of the puzzle because for me to, I, what I really want to do right now is I really want to build stronger in my European teams. I really want to build stronger in those core teams that go in the big game weeks, that go in the heavy hitting points of the season. And I've got the highest value that can maybe go in the secondary market if they pop off in a big way. But I think there's a great opportunity to be had with the American cards. I think a lot of people, and, and Asian and uh, South American and whatever, a lot of people are thinking, the European season is not that long. I'm not really going to need it. But what I think a lot of people are missing with some of this stuff is it's not just the gap in the calendar you're going to cover, right? But 
when the season is brand new, no one's up to speed. There's so many moving parts. Some guys are transferring around still. Managers and blah, blah, blah. It's messy, the beginning of the season. I love at the beginning of the European season. If you're still watching this video, you deserve this. What I like at the beginning of the European season is American players and Asian players that are three quarters of the way through their season and you know who's playing. They've got high XP on the cards you've been running for and, you know, they're getting into the decision-making part of their season, who's going to win titles and cups and all that good stuff and that's when the big scores tend to happen, you know. So um, it's not just for that gap in the calendar, but it's catching the Europeans coming back into town and beating them, <laughs> you know. It's, uh, it's been able to do that also because at the moment you don't have that because the Europeans are coming to the end of their season and it's all the big strong teams and they're fighting for titles and rotations at a minimum and they're going weekend to weekend and whatever. And in America and Japan and Korea and whatever, they're in the first 10 games. Some managers are new, some transfers are new, yada yada. It's not quite rolling on all fronts, but some of them are and some of them will start too, you know. I say our trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.